Today on the newscast, the UN Security Council is set to hold an emergency meeting over the Temple Mount as Jerusalem moves into the center of the world's attention. Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast and welcome to Nashville, Tennessee. I'm here in the Music City for the day at the Huckabee Studio where Governor Mike Huckabee records his weekly TBN show. I'm here hosting a TBN Town Hall special, The State of the Nation 2023, featuring the one and only Governor Mike Huckabee, Eric Metaxas, Dr. Rick Rigsby, and Sheila Walsh. They'll all be joining me, plus a live studio audience will be taking questions about the issues that will affect every American, and in particular, the body of Christ in 2023, and how we, as followers of Jesus, can be a light in the darkness. So you will not want to miss that Monday, January 9th on TBN, 8 p.m. Eastern Time. In the meantime, we've got the usual darkness at the U.N. as the U.N. Security Council prepares to hold a, quote, emergency meeting over the visit to the Temple Mount on Tuesday by Israel's National Security Minister Itamar ben Gavir. Now, if you missed the backdrop on this story, you can check it out here in our archives. We posted a newscast about this on Tuesday, the day of the now notorious visit in, in the view of the UN and many in the so-called world community, notorious visit of ben Gavir to the Temple Mount. ben Gavir, just to review, paid a 15-minute visit to the Temple Mount. He walked around, and then he left. That was it. This has apparently risen to the status of a UN Security Council emergency meeting now, folks, over Ben Gavir's visit, because the world uh, went into an uproar right away. Not only, of course, uh, the, the Muslim and Arab world, but China, France, the UK, the EU, and yes, the United States, the Biden administration condemning this visit by Ben Gavir. Now, Jordan accused him of storming the Al-Aqsa Mosque atop the Temple Mount. He did not set foot inside the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Again, he walked around the perimeter of the Temple Mount and he left after 15 minutes. But this was apparently a major international incident. Now, a few things here to break down. Number one, this UN Security Council meeting, when will it be? The meeting will either be held later today or tomorrow, Friday, January 6th. We're not quite sure yet, but it's coming in the next 24 hours or so. It will largely, it seems, be a ceremonial meeting. Uh, will any official condemnation of Israel be released? Unclear, but basically the UN is saying, this is how concerned we are about this that we are going to hold an emergency meeting. So on one hand, you could say it's not that big of a deal, the UN up to its old tricks. But folks, on the other hand, it is a very big deal because the UN has its focus like a laser on God's city, Jerusalem, the ancient and ancestral capital of Israel and the Jewish people, the undivided capital. And Israel says, look, Jerusalem will never be divided again, but that's exactly what the world wants to do. They want to divide Jerusalem, give half to the Palestinians as the future capital of a Palestinian state. That is the plan, and certainly the Biden administration is on board with that plan, which made this criticism really no surprise. Uh, we've talked about the coming collision course between the new Netanyahu-led government in Israel and the Biden administration. We had uh, the U.S. ambassador to Israel, Tom Nides, condemning Ben Gvir's visit. Then the State Department yesterday, spokesman Ned Price, uh, condemning it as well, calling it unacceptable. And their whole point is the status quo, the Biden administration's point, and much of the world's point, is the status quo, so-called, atop the Temple Mount, cannot be changed under any circumstances. What is the status quo? Uh, since 1967, when Israel recaptured Jerusalem, they agreed at the time, the defense minister at the time, Moshe Dayan, agreed to allow Muslims to control the Temple Mount. Jordan is seen as the custodian of the Temple Mount. Of course, the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock are atop the Temple Mount today, but the Mount was once the site 
where both Jewish temples stood, Solomon's temple and the second temple, Herod's temple. It's the holiest site in Judaism. Also for Christians, obviously, great significance. Jesus taught inside that second temple. That's where he chased out the money changers. But again, uh, it is the home today of the Al-Aqsa Mosque and the Dome of the Rock, and Jews are not permitted to pray atop the Temple Mount. That's the status quo, folks. If a Jew openly prays atop the holiest site in Judaism, he or she will either be arrested or escorted swiftly off of the Temple Mount. Nonetheless, we are seeing record numbers of Jews visit the Temple Mount. There is a hunger to visit that site that's only increasing. And Ben Gavir, with his visit on Tuesday, said, hey, look, we're not going to cave to the likes of Hamas, which are threatening us. Hamas, of course, sparked a war in May 2021, blaming Israel for desecrating the Al-Aqsa Mosque and desecrating the Temple Mount, which they call Haram al-Sharif. So it's a powder keg, folks. Uh, needless to say, but again, you're going to see, and you're seeing already a groundswell of support among Israelis who are saying, hey, wait a minute, why can't we pray on the Temple Mount? Okay, we should not only be able to visit, but we should be able to pray there. Muslims can pray there openly. We've we've showed you footage here in the newscast of large-scale Muslim prayers during Friday prayers on the Temple Mount. Why can't a Jew... uh, where his forefathers prayed 3,000 years ago, stand there for a minute and say a prayer on the Temple Mount. Why is that uh, such a horrible thing that can spark an international incident? Well, that's what we're being told right now. And the status quo is no Jewish and no Christian, open Christian prayer for that matter as well, atop the Temple Mount. But folks, I think a day is coming where that is going to change. And hey, a key point here before we go, Ben Gavir, with his visit, did nothing to change the status quo. If the status quo is, okay, Jews cannot pray atop the Temple Mount, Ben Gavir did not pray. He walked around, he said a few words into a camera, and he left. So the status quo was not affected. This shows you, again, that the world is obsessed with Jerusalem, obsessed with what happens there, and in particular, obsessed with the Jewish claim. To the city of Jerusalem, which is an airtight, historical, biblical, and prophetic claim, no doubt. And folks, we shouldn't be surprised that the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, which are literally geographically the center of the world, they're also the center of God's uh, prophetic timeline, we shouldn't be surprised that the world's attention is more and more focused on the Temple Mount. The prophet Zechariah talks about a day that is coming where Jerusalem will become like a burdensome stone for the entire world, and any nation that comes against it will be cut to pieces. So you're seeing the prophetic chess pieces moving on the board, and Jerusalem and the struggle over Jerusalem is at the center of it. But folks, I think a day is coming where that status quo will change. This new government, this new right-wing government, uh, the Prime Minister Netanyahu is leading, perhaps they are the impetus uh, for that change to the status quo. And there's also a groundswell for a third temple atop the Temple Mount. Needless to say, we are living in prophetic times. And hey, the world howled uh, when President Trump, former President Trump, announced that the U.S. would move its embassy to Jerusalem and recognize Jerusalem Uh, as Israel's capital. That happened in May 2018. I was there in Jerusalem at the ceremony, and folks, it was uh, pretty—things were pretty quiet. Yes, there were some Palestinian rioters that day along the Gaza border, but in the Middle East, things were quiet because the likes of Saudi Arabia, Jordan, Egypt, the UAE, they know they have bigger fish to fry, namely Iran. The Iranian nuclear program threatens not only Israel, it threatens the entire region, including the Sunni Arab nations. So if we do have a status quo change eventually and Jews are allowed to pray atop the Temple Mount, it may be almost, I don't want to say anticlimactic because it would be a huge, huge event, but in terms of the expected uproar uh, and violence throughout the region, 
perhaps that will not shape up the way we're being warned about uh, by the likes of the UN Security Council. Perhaps it will be a situation similar to when the embassy was moved. We're about to find out, I think, perhaps sooner rather than later. Hey, be sure to subscribe to the news channel right here on YouTube as we head into the new year. We've got a lot of great things planned in 2023. Until tomorrow, thanks for joining us. God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.